actually. <laughs> it's 11, less than 30 seconds. Welcome to the oh, uh, the magic of customer profiling, the latest in the in our series of Go Leads, a uh, lead gen compass. Um, these are uh, our, our, lead, our sales lead generation series. And so in this one, we're gonna talk about the importance of customer, customer profiling and using it for finding new business and um, we'll talk about, it's, it's one of these topics that I will say sometimes seems a little unsexy, but we will say it's vital for the future, especially with everything that's happening. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, today, what we will cover is, we'll get on the same page. When I say customer profiling, what is it that I mean? Um, and then I'll give you some stories and examples, and then I'll give you my low tech scoring grid or the, uh, our lead gen compass low tech scoring grid. And then we'll talk about a little bit about account based marketing because that's um, kind of the buzzy term that is where a lot of customer profiling is oriented. And um, especially with the big companies, uh, the bigger companies are doing a lot of uh, uh, pushing this account based marketing concept. We'll talk about that and then we'll wrap it up. And as always, before we begin, if you have questions, that you're dying to have answered or any questions along the way, use the uh, Zoom webinar chat. Nui is going to be monitoring that or you can use the uh, Q&A because she's also monitoring the Q&A. And, uh, and I get to the Q&A at the end and uh, if I remember, I check the chat as we go along. So the first thing I wanna talk to you about is a story. So this is uh, one of the things that we do at Lead Gen Compass in uh, Go Leads is uh, we uh, help a few startups. So uh, advising startups, um, they usually can't afford our services, so we're just offering them advice um, in our little, uh, we're here in Nebraska, so it's the, the Silicon Prairie is what they call it. So this part of the Silicon Prairie, we uh, offer advice to some of these startup companies. One of these companies that I've been talking to, uh, he has an idea, a healthcare marketplace. It's a big idea and it's an interesting idea and uh, something, it sounds like the kind of thing that something may happen with. Um, one of the things we told him to do as this group that I'm part of is we said, hey, go out and get some ideas. This is such a technology laden idea. You really need to understand uh, how much you're going to need to invest in that to keep it, you know, for the upkeep and whether or not there's any tools that are out there. So that was three weeks ago. Yesterday, I was talking to him and he brings to me an eight page proposal uh, that somebody had worked up for him. And this thing, he's, uh, all, he's ash, ashen faced, right? He's, he's just, he's like, okay, I can't, Greg, I can't believe this. This thing is going to cost a hundred thousand bucks. And so my question was, to him, well, how long did you have to wait for that? Like, how'd you take? And he's like, well, uh, there was, uh, we had to reschedule a couple of times to get together. But once we got together, we met for at least, you know, it was probably about an hour, hour and a half face to face. And then it took them 10 days for them to get this to me. So when I saw that, I was thinking of customer profiling because if I were advising, not him, but if I were advising the company that he was talking to, which is a developer, and I've talked to a few developers, um, in town, one of the challenges is this. They would, t I already know what their objections were. They would say, oh, well, this is a project that we're interested in and um, we like hearing about these things and it didn't take that much time. But truly from a qualified prospect point of view, they could have saved themselves two reschedules. They could have probably shortened that hour face-to-face <clears throat> -face meeting where they were trying to generate spec a spec sheet and 10 days of internal debate, even if they really didn't spend that much time on it, uh, they could have done it all with just one question, which was to, to ask him or to say to him, oh, ballpark, you know, any work that we do is around $100,000 for a project like what you're talking about. Like, you know, give or take 25, 40%, you know, somewhere in there. It could be as low as 75, as much as 125. Does that sound like it's in the ballpark for you? He would have said, <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't have any money like that, even though he might be raising it. Here's my point is that time when it comes to sales and marketing, right? Time is the only, that's our non-renewable resource. It's always moving forward. And so when we talk about customer profiling, what we're trying to do is we're, we're not trying to say there are bad prospects and you shouldn't waste your time or shouldn't pick behind what's, uh, what's behind door number three. But we are saying that you should have uh, an idea so that everybody is on the same page as far as which people, how do you prioritize all the requests for information or any 
types of customers that you're out chasing. So with that in mind, um, the reason that I find this topic important is because artificial intelligence is coming, right? So this is uh, from McKenzie, our, our friends at McKenzie, right? So who does McKenzie work with? McKenzie, the big consulting company, they work with the biggest companies uh, in the world. They do giant pro projects. Uh, as a matter of fact, this summer, I read they got in trouble because they were doing a, tr a project in India that was yeah, kind of sketchy, but the project size was $700 million for a single project, huge projects. So they work on really big things, big ideas inside of big companies. And this is a report that they literally just released, I wanna say just a couple of days ago because it's uh, November, 2018. And they're saying that um, when they are working with their companies, that one of the challenges that they have, and oh, by the way, if this cuts out here and there, I apologize, I keep getting this message that my internet connection is unstable. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but when McKinsey's out talking to these big companies, they say the big challenges are foundational barriers, right? So you can read that. Specifically, they say the building blocks are missing. Um, so AI adoption at the big companies still has trouble scaling it inside of a lot of units of business, but especially in marketing and sales. And the reason is, is they say foundational building blocks are missing. Specifically, they say relevant data is, oh, I say relevant data is, it's, it should say relevant data are inaccessible by AI because that is the big challenge is that uh, in order for this artificial intelligence, these tools to work, they need to have good data, clean data, and they need to be working with a lot of data. And customer profiling is part of what you would feed to the robot going forward. So when I talk about what customer profiling is, um, specifically just so we're on the same page, I start by saying, you know, it defines who we are, right? So who we are as a company, what is it that we do? That is part of customer profiling. Uh, part of that is what we sell and the, or the services that we provide. And then who are the customers, right? So who are our customers in general that we talk to? Um, who's the sweet spot? Who's the sweet spot that we, that we are working inside of? And if you are a marketer, you're probably familiar with personas. So it's really less like personas if I have to define like somebody's like, oh, so customer profile, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like this, like the urban cake shop, Becky, who's 32 and a young professional and she's looking for a wedding cake. Guests will remember. <clears throat> okay, that's, we're talking less about personas, more about just target marketing. Um, who is it that we're trying to go after? So when I think of those, I think of like a defined market, like manufacturers, 10 years plus under 100 employees. Um, I'm not uh, a persona like Becky who works at the manufacturer may be part of that, but for the customer profiling itself that I'm about to describe to you, it is much more just inside of that target market, even though we've narrowed the market down, manufacturers 10 plus years in business, under 100 employees, who do we start with? That's what we're gonna talk about going forward. So in order to do anything with data with customer profiles, it's, it all starts with cleaning up your internal files. So part of customer profiling is internal files, part of customer profiling is using external data sources, but really everything starts inside. Uh, it starts with data quality. H have we deduped all the records? Have we um, standardized our processes for uh, generating information, right? Have we used some pretty uh, big tools to verify the information is the, the like the NCOA, the national change of address. Are we getting the post offices records for whether or not uh, the businesses we're talking to, have they changed their address or have they changed anything about how they operate? Is that clean? And is it standardized to postal regulations? Um, have we added geocodes to the entire database where, so we can tell where those, those people are? Um, and then besides that, internally, do we have those standards like quality checks and updates? What are the processes on there? So for example, on the customer file side, um, we may have uh, Allstate, right? Um, and it's, but it's in our database. We do business with insurance companies and Allstate is in our database 350 times. And inside of that, it may be in there, there's a, the corporate address that we do business with, there's branches of all state branches that we work with. And then there's a whole bunch of DBAs, right? Doing business as, so it's Greg's insurance company, but I'm really just an all state agent. Um, and I'm in the database for those. How are you going to handle each of those instances? That's 
what we talk about when we talk about cleaning up internal files. So getting everything standardized, right? Is it going to be, is Nebraska and the state abbreviation, is it going to be NE like the post office likes? Is it going to be NEB because that's the way it used to be? Is it going to be Nebraska? Uh, I'll spell that because uh, we like to be formal. I don't know. It, and there are some best practices in there, but really a lot of those are, what are your internal best practices for how you keep your data as clean as possible? And that's internal data. Then once we have that internal data set up, now it's time to start adding data. So this is all just setting up for how do we do customer profiling. And in there, we look at third party information and third party information, the ones, the party, the third party information that we're most interested in is stuff that's been somewhat standardized and even modeled. And the reason is, is because it tends to give us the best coverage of a database. So uh, it gives us, it, it may not be 100% accurate, but since it's consistent all the way across the entire database, um, it helps. So here's things that are just available inside of most uh, business databases. The GoLeads database included, but uh, some others too, uh, the SIC, the industry codes, how, what is the employee size, right? Uh, do we have it exact or is it a range? How many years have they been in business or how many years have they been in the database at least? Um, contacts, other contacts that are at the company titles, their social media profiles, maybe even their ages. There's some information that's out there for that. Uh, different types of technology or equipment that we can tell that they have inside of their company. This is all stuff that you would now take and put on top of your existing uh, customer database. And so the reason that we want to do that is because on our customer files, we already have great things on our customers like revenue or how, how, how they operate inside of like, what, what is our customer service experience with them like? And we can internally really segment those into like, these are A, B, and C prospects, right? These are uh, people that we enjoy doing business with and uh, we have a nice, a profitable relationship uh, with, and we can apply that out to prospects. And so inside of that third party information is usually prospects where we can model what their revenue potential is. We can model what kind of customer service experience we're gonna have with them. And so um, for some, just doing these first two steps, standardizing your internal databases, no matter how big it is, um, even though obviously if you're a startup, you don't have much of an internal database. So I'm assuming you've been in business for a few years, but just taking those files and making a marketing database, that is a 10% bump in revenue um, and often a 25% reduction in the cost of sales to find that new revenue. So it can be very profitable, but it's, uh, you know, I'd love to say that it goes on forever, but they tend to be uh, quick bumps, quick bumps in revenue and uh, without much additional cost in there is that this first part of customer profiling, which is just getting uh, everything to look a little standardized. So again, keeping in mind that future technology is going to rely on these inputs. So we're trying to get it ready for that also. So here, let me give you an example of us, what we would do internally. So when we launched our new product, uh, Lead Gen Compass, we have a giant database that we can pull from of uh, customers that have done business with GoLeads and uh, customers that have done business with our sister company, US Farm Data. So it has a bunch of important fields in there, ranging from customer ID, right, their first, last name, company name, all the mailing information, email addresses, who the rep of record is, when they first signed up, how much money they've invested, um, when the last charge date was, what the products were they bought, right? So these are all things that are internal, important to us. But from a marketing standpoint, this is somewhat lacking because I don't have a lot of things to, uh, to sort on. So the first thing we had to ask is I had to say, hey, you know, uh, what other like reps as you're out working with customers or looking for prospects, what are some of the things that you ask for? And what I'm listening for is I'm listening for things where I might be able to find them in third party databases. For instance, um, in this case, we're offering uh, lead generation services. So when I find, you know, it's important to know who these companies are, of course, but then on my, my sales reps, one of the things that uh, they ask for, they, they want to know more about like, do they have a website? Yes or no. Um, is analytics installed? Do they have uh, audiences in there? Are they using audiences and, and paid ads, uh, newsletters, target markets, like who are their target markets and do they have LinkedIn profiles and what is their social media? There's a lot of those types of questions. And it turns out that we can dig up that information 
uh, from some of these databases as well and append them. Plus, I, as, as you know, we have um, our own databases, right? So we have uh, Go Leads um, where we can get the industry, we can get the size, the years of business, the titles, other people that are in the database besides the people who had called us um, and made a purchase. So we can append all of this information and all that allows us to do is to segment, right? Then we can uh, use a simple scoring system inside of what I would consider to be a marketing database at this point, right? So accounting and finance uses a database inside your company to keep track of customers and revenue and bills and accounts receivable and, and uh, everything else. What we're looking for as marketers is we need a database for ourselves that we can keep track of, not only customers, but prospects. And then we need a few more fields than somebody in finance needs. If finance needs a credit report or some sort of DMB report before they extend them credit, um, that's very similar to, to what we have um, and what we're looking for. So when we uh, look at this, we can uh, create a simple scoring system, right? We can um, take a look at all that information that, was, that, that I just rolled through websites, analytics, and we can weigh them for the importance of that information to making the sale. So from a marketer standpoint, it's like how important is a website? Would be a question that, that we would ask. Um, and then we would uh, create a score so we could score that prospect by that field. <clears throat> so we know how important that field is to us and then we can score the prospect inside that field. And then by adding up all the different pieces of information, we can usually come up with a total score. And then from that total score, we can determine a course of action. And let me run th uh, through an example for you because um, once we, so if we start by weighing the importance of that field, uh, th the information that would be in that field for our, uh, in making the sale, and then we score it, we score the prospect by whatever's in that field, um, multiply those two together to get a score, add up all the scores, and then we use a score to determine action the way that works is like this. So if I say uh, one is um, negligible, right? So the importance of the field to me as a sale. So like having a name, like having a first name in the field, how important to that is that? Uh, it's, yeah, it's important that I know who they are, but it's really not important moving forward. I'm probably gonna figure that out. Or that they're in business, period. Well, that's really not an issue for a lot of things that we, uh, a lot of people that we work with, but those are, I would still score them, right? I'd score them a one, because if they're not in business, then at least they get, they get zero for that. But 10, on the other hand, that's vital, right? So that's uh, like being able to pay for services, having a checkbook, going back to that original example that I gave you of that startup. Um, so if I gave you uh, a, a few examples like here, what if it's like industry? So industry to us, uh, it turns out that there is, we do work better with some industries than others. Um, just because of the way that those industries are structured. So for instance, on an industry field, that NI, the NAICS, the NAICS score, the, uh, the, the old SIC codes, I'm gonna score that seven out of 10 um, for importance, right? Employee size, um, that has some bearing on who we work best with. So when we talk about mutual success, us and the client working together, which people do we work best with? Employee size is a little more important than industry um, and then like, but if they have a website, eh, it's important, you know, anybody who doesn't have a website anymore, maybe that's a signal somehow, but it's not critical, right? It's much more towards the not important side, et cetera. So if you can imagine, say we have, uh, you know, the, uh, 10 of these fields or 20 of these fields, you can go as deep as you want into it. Um, then we start looking at inside of each of those segments, right? So if I look at industry, how do I score them? Well, for us, manufacturers and wholesalers, um, we work really well with them. A lot of the work that we do helps generate a lot of leads for them. If you're in the health services industry, it's a little less um, impressive. And then if you're in the fire, which is finance, insurance, real estate, um, those are a little hard. Like it's a little harder for us doing what we do to generate leads. We can still have success, but not as much success. So that would be an, a way that we would score industry. Um, so if depending on what your SIC code is, those would be the scores that we would give you. And then 
depending on what the size of your company is, we work really well with companies that are in that mid range, 20 to 50 employees. They tend to have, um, they don't, or actually they just don't have big marketing staffs. They usually have a person, a couple people working on marketing and they need help. So that's why we work well with them. 51 to 250. Okay. So that's more like an okay. Um, they, they do tend to have bigger uh, marketing departments and the challenge we have with them is communication back and forth, uh, getting lost or getting, uh, sent down to some lower level employee that doesn't know what it is that we're trying to do from a big picture standpoint. Um, and then uh, a thousand plus is the same. It's, it's about the same as 51 to 250, but not on here. I didn't put this in, but if you had like under five employees, um, that would even, that, that might even score lower, like a four. And the reason is, is just because of uh, owner challenges. I find that uh, it, it's hard to get in touch with the owners, right? The process slows down a little bit. They uh, have a lot more opinions as to what's going to be done. So this is part, all part of a score. And so, for example, if I knew you were a manufacturer, which is a piece, I'm going to actually try to annotate here. Yeah, it's not going to work. The, uh, so if you're a manufacturer, right, I would score you, that's a nine. And then as far as overall importance is a seven up there at the top. If we can see that, right, if our industry is a seven out of 10. So you get 63. And you happen to be a small a smaller company, so I give you four points, and then that's, but it's pretty important, so you get 32. So if you can imagine across a bunch of criteria, let's just say that there's, when we add everything up, there's 500 points possible. The way we have the scoring system set is, if you're 85 or above, right, so you're basically an A student, um, if you score 85% or higher, then we need to prioritize all activity around that account. Um, if you're somewhere in the 60 to 84% range, then we mark that as a B. So it's important, but if you have any A's, work them first. And if you're uh, 40 to 60% on the scoring system, then you would be a C prospect. So somebody that's important to us, but if you have a B or an A, please work them first. Um, and if you're under 40, that would be a D prospect. <clears throat> so going back to our friends at the very beginning, there's no way that that wasn't a, a, a D prospect, right? My friend who was in the startup who just needed some information, they can be nice guys and um, share information with him. But for the most part, there's no way that that was, uh, a, if you're charging a hundred thousand bucks to build an app, you need to be working with a bigger company or at least some sort of scoring system that would tell your salespeople, you know, yeah, that was a lunch and that was an appointment, but you know, uh, you, you really need to spend your time somewhere else. So when I put all this out there, it's not that this is some rigid system. It's a, a helpful decision-making tool. It helps you make better decisions. It helps you save time. And as we know, uh, time, or as we said at the beginning, time is our non-renewable resource. So if you need more examples of that, um, just email me because I can uh, walk through uh, an example specifically for you and as well as come up, help you come up with uh, some of the criteria. So let me get back to this. That brings us up to ABM, account-based marketing. So it's really buzzy these days. A lot of these marketing technology companies are pushing account-based marketing solutions. And it's, on the surface, this doesn't sound like it's uh, all that uh, amazing, but focusing sales and marketing resources on target accounts within a specific market. But with some of these tracking tools, it can get kind of cool. So if you know that you're targeting a division of IBM and we, can, we have some data out there that indicates who these people are inside the company, and then we can track them coming to the website and the materials that they're downloading. This is all before a sales rep even talks to them. We can kind of put them in the sales cycle. It's kind of like I was watching that Facebook um, expose on uh, uh, Frontline and they were talking about even if you don't, even if you've never been on Facebook, there's shadow Facebook profiles that are built of you out there. So there's a the the shadow Greg Chambers <laughs> that's being that's built out there. And then when you finally sign up, it, it connects all the dots. But in the between time, you still have a persona that's out there. Um, that's kind of like what this account-based marketing is: is a persona is built around your target best customers. Right now, there's this thing called the Martech 5000, and uh, this is as of April. 2018, 
literally 5,000 companies that are building these marketing technologies. Not every single one of them is related to account-based marketing. But I'll tell you what, every single one of them relies on clean data or provides data, like that whole second to last section over there, D, uh, data, the blue section. That is all data companies that are around this particular issue. You can do a ton of this stuff yourself, and it really does start with um, getting your data, your internal data clean, and then adding a, just a, a few fields to it for a marketing database that is useful to you and your people. Because um, here's the thing, what I find is that a lot of these companies, since they are, they've all taken on, a lot of them, I'd say the vast majority have taken on funding, so they're reporting to investors that want to see a return on that investment, they've got to go make a market. And to make a market, sometimes you have to take what should be a best practice and kind of force everybody into it. For most businesses under, under 1,000 employees, it's way better if you have your own internal best practice and then you apply these tools to it. Uh, part of that internal best practice should be uh, getting your data cleaned up and creating a marketing database that you can use with a little bit of your own, just basic marketing intelligence. This uh, scoring system that I showed you, it's it, on a spreadsheet. Actually, I could probably make, uh, I will make one up and I will put it uh, out on the recording with the new will help me get one out on the recording so that you can kind of see how it works. It's super simple, um, but it's super effective when it gets applied over. And then what you find is uh, the discussions alone often help drive um, new opportunities or, or get people moving in the right direction. And that kind of creates new opportunities. Going back to that guy again, those guys that spent a whole week putting together a hundred thousand dollar proposal for somebody who had, you know, he's probably never, never seen a hundred thousand dollars, but in order for uh, like, if they had all that time back and then had to force themselves to try to find an A prospect would have been way better for their company. So in summary, how's that? <laughs> yeah, y'all still with me? In summary, profiling is important. And the reason is, is because we're entering this world where computers can do so many things and this, uh, these, this artificial intelligence, the, the, the machine learning can do things for us, especially on the marketing side. The challenge is, is that it really does start with clean data. So the cleaner you can get your data, the smaller it is as you get bigger it makes it easier so once you have clean data to start with you can add third-party data because it's a lot easier to match on and then with the scoring system like the one i described or one that you invented yourself inside of of, of your uh inside of your firm if you can segment and score and then have everybody on the same page for what type of activity you expect and how you expect them to prioritize that activity that set you up for something like ABM, which is really a feature. It's not a strategy. It's kind of pitched as this is what you need to be doing is account-based marketing. Like it's some sort of strategy. And now it's, it's, a, it's a tool, it's a feature of some different marketing approaches that you can take. But going forward, uh, if you do the first steps, the first thing you need to do is start today with uh, cleansing and standardizing uh, your, your data. It is, um, there's a lot of data houses out there that, uh, they're, they're starting for work. Um, and I, we can tell you, we can, we can introduce them to you or we can do the work ourselves because we've been doing it for so long. So that is customer profiling and why it's important. So as a parting gift, you get from me, the Human Beings Guide to Business Growth, which has some of these ideas in there for how to get everybody on the same page. Um, this these types of discussions are part of it. The perfect growth formula is for how to get sales and marketing and uh, you know, business ownership all talking together. Um, a quick little framework that helps you give uh, everybody get on the same page It aids in communication. And then Lead Gen Compass is our new tool. So you should be getting a call if you haven't received one already, inviting you to, we'll do a, a, a sales lead generation analysis um, on your organization and we'll do that uh, pro bono for you. And then if you have any questions, go leads.com, leadgencompass.com. My name is Greg Chambers. Uh, you can call me Bill Matern. Um, any, any of our people are happy to talk to you about what it is that uh, we think that uh, would help you and make you look great. And as a matter of fact, if you take this scoring system 
and run back, stick it on the whiteboard. You don't even have to tell anybody that this is where you heard it first. Just say you thought of it. It just came to you. <laughs> and uh, you, will, you will get a, a few awards. You will get a few accolades. I guarantee it. All right. Thanks for listening. And um, our next one comes up in about three weeks. I don't know what the topic is, but we will talk to you at that time. Thanks again and uh, have a great week and a great Thanksgiving. I don't talk to you.